I'm going to start my preview video with talking about the men and um, I guess the front runner, the headliner would be um, our current world champion, Patrick Chan. Now I'll be honest with you, I am not the biggest Patrick Chan fan in the world, but um, I can appreciate his skills and what he brings to skating, it's just not my personal taste. But um, I do expect him to skate well. He kind of had a rough summer competition um, a couple months ago. Not that summer competitions are a great indicator of how a skater will do going through the season. But, um, you know, last season was longer than it usually is with Worlds being postponed. And so I think it's important for people to remember that skaters are not going to be at their peak, especially this early in the season. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does and um, how he lands his jumps and if he falls three times or if he's able to stand up, we'll, we'll see. But um, I am looking forward to seeing how it goes. Um, and then I guess the next person who would be coming up is Daisuke Takahashi, who I love. I love him. Um, because of his surgery he just had, he's a little further behind than mostly everybody else, but um, something that you can always count on with him is artistry and presentation and, and, and really selling the program. You know, he goes out there and everything is 150% amped, so I'm really excited. I really like his long program this season, um, the Blues program. I really like it. I think it fits his style really well, so I'm excited to see how he does and um, kind of where he starts his season because I have no doubt that it will continue to improve throughout and, and hopefully will peak, you know, at the right time. Next we have our American guys, um, Adam Rippin and Ross Miner, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how Adam does because he had a really rough last season, didn't make the world team, he's had a lot of time to kind of reinvent himself and really work on what was missing in his skating and his consistency. Um, he's moved on to another coach. He now works with Yuka and Jason in, De in Detroit. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the progress he's made. Something that really interests me is how skaters kind of deal with disappointment. Um, you know, some skaters, you can just tell their confidence is shattered and it, it's really difficult for them to kind of rebound from a tough season. And other skaters, it completely motivates them and they come back reinvigorated and with something to prove. And Adam is not my favorite U.S. guy, but I've always enjoyed watching him. And I really hope he's able to kind of reinvent himself this season. And I really like Ross. <laughs> um, my friends and I have taken to calling him Boss Miner just because his name lends itself to so, much, so many amazing puns. But, um... I like Ross. Um, I think he has a lot of developing to do um, in terms of his presentation and his programs and his artistry, but I do appreciate this is a kid who was not scoring higher than like 120, 125 in the free skates at, during his Grand Prix events last season, and then he comes to Nationals like a completely different person. You know, he saw what he was doing, he acknowledged it, he didn't like where his skating was going. And so he worked hard, and he made a change, and skated amazingly at Nationals, made the world team, skated amazingly at Worlds. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how this season measures up to last season, and how he's able to build on the back half of his last season. Um, and I'm really rooting for him, you know. He's definitely still an up-and-comer. He's not really a contender yet, but um, I think he has great potential. So I'm excited to see what he can do. And I want to wrap up talking about the men with talking about what I would like to call the dark horses. Um, Dennis Ten is one that I never count out because when he's on, he's amazing. I mean, his jumps are gorgeous, and he's so fluid on the ice. He has great style about him. Um, but he did compete last week at Skate America and didn't have an amazing skate. But I, like I said, I never count him out. But the fatigue from competing in two competitions right in a row might set in. Um, and the same goes for Kevin Vanderpair. Now, he had a much better outing at Skate America, surprisingly won the silver medal, which was a shock to many people, including myself, um, but good for him. Um, I don't particularly love his skating, but 
he's been around a long time, so it's kind of cool that he was able to have a great result, you know, so late in his career. Um, but he's another one, I mean, that might be really motivating, and he might have another great competition, or the fatigue might sit in, and he might just be too tired to get through two programs. We'll see. Um, we'll see if he can repeat and, and medal again. I feel like the top two are probably kind of set between Shan and Takahashi, but, you know, anything can happen, as we saw at Skate America. Um, but to wrap up kind of the dark horses, um, Javier Fernandez is a skater that I've liked for a few years now. Um, and he is back with a new coach and finally a new long program. If I had to see that drunk pirate co uh, program one more time, it was going to drive me crazy. I liked it the first few times, but then after the next season, I was just over it. But I've heard a lot of great reviews about his long program. I wasn't able to watch the practices. I was at work. But the people who were able to watch um, are all saying how great the program is, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I really like when a skater can kind of come from a country that you don't really think of skating. I mean, when you think of skating, you don't think of Spain. So for him him to come up and, and start doing really well, it's exciting. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does here, and hopefully he can kind of play spoiler and maybe quite possibly end up on the podium. We'll see. Now I want to talk a little bit about the ladies. Um, the ladies event is really stacked here, and I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing what goes down. Um, the person I'm most looking forward to kind of seeing where she fits in is Elizaveta Tuktamesheva. I, I can't say her last name yet, so I apologize because I know I butchered it, but you guys know I'm talking about little Liza. Um, she's cute. She's adorable. Um, I prefer her to her Russian baby counterpart, but, um, I don't know, I just, I just, there's something about her that I like. Um, she did really well at the Japan Open about a month and a half maybe ago, I don't remember how long ago it was, but, um, I really enjoyed her there, and I'm looking forward to seeing how she fits in, um, on the Senior Grand Prix. I don't really pay that much attention to junior skaters, just because I like to wait until they get to the senior level and they're really able to prove themselves, and, you know, they start to grow artistically and, and start to add bigger tricks and things like that. So I like to, I'm very much a wait and see type of person. Um, but it was hard to ignore um, her performances last season. So, of course, I've heard all about her, even if I can't pronounce her name yet. But I definitely expect her to be on the podium, possibly win. So it, it, I will see how she does. I'm really excited. Um, Along with her, we have the American Trio, which almost looks like a long program free skate warm-up at Nationals. Um, you know, Rachel Flatt, who I'm not the biggest fan of, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing the progress she's made since changing coaches, which is a decision that has long been needed, in my opinion. Um, and kind of, you know, she goes to college now. She has a different sort of life. So I'm looking forward to seeing if that's had any impact on her skating style and skills and just how she presents herself on the ice. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Ashley Wagner. I saw her live um, it was about a month ago now. Um, she came and participated in a show that was near where I live, and I went to go see it. She was really good. All her jumps looked secure. I think she did two or three triples, and she looked like she was having a blast, and she looked like she was in great shape. Um, so I'm really excited to see how she does. I've always liked her. Um, I haven't, I haven't fallen in love with her skating yet, but I do enjoy watching her and would really like to see her do well. Um, I love John Nix, her coach, so I'm really hoping that he's been able to kind of rein her in and, and help her with her consistency. And then there's my lovely Mariah. I love Mariah. I love her. I'm one of those people who can't give up on her. Um, I just see so much potential and, and so much that she has to offer that every time she steps on the ice, I keep hoping that, you know, this will be the time where she's able to put two great programs together and, and really skate well. Last season was rough for her. It was really rough. And I'm hoping that not making the world team really motivated her to train harder and to work harder. Um, her skate at Four Continents was great. Um, I think a lot of the program, the problems lied in her programs as well. They weren't great programs. I liked her short, didn't love her long. Um, 
as opposed to the Olympic year when she had two great programs, even if one was to one of those tired war horses, Carmen. It was still a great program. Um, I really like her short program this season, um, and I haven't seen her long program, so I don't know if I'll like that or not, but I do enjoy her short program. I keep waiting for her to kind of, because she's coached by Frank Carroll and Michelle Kwan is my favorite skater, not that I expect any skater to follow Michelle Kwan's trajectory in her career, but um, after the Olympic year, I, I expected Mariah to come out kind of like Michelle Kwan did after 1995. When in 1995, she was the small girl with the high ponytail and, and the fresh face, and, and she was great, but very young looking. And then she came out in 1996, and she's very mature, and she's got that Salome program, and, and she's just grown up. And because Frank is awesome rise coach, I kind of expected that same sort of thing, and haven't gotten it yet. Um, because I do think that's what Mariah needs. Mariah needs that maturity. Um, and she needs the consistency. She has a lot to work on, but what she does have, I mean, she's incredible. And I'm hoping that this season will be the season that she's able to kind of pull it all together and do well. To kind of round out the ladies event, um, there's one skater that I really enjoy who's going to be there, and that's Akiko Suzuki. I love her. She's just so full of life, and, and you can just tell she loves skating. It doesn't matter how she's skating you know, how well she's doing. She just loves it, and she has such amazing presentation. I love watching her, and so I'm really hoping that she can medal or even win. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does here. Her long program is to the same music that Meryl and Charlie are doing their free dance to, so I'm really excited because I love that piece of music, and I love what Meryl and Charlie were able to do with it, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do. And to wrap it up, I guess I could talk a little bit about the Canadian ladies, um, just because I imagine at Skate Canada they will be somewhat of a factor. Um, I love Cynthia Phaneuf. I love her. Um, she has a lot to work on. Um, she's not incredibly consistent, but I think her skating is beautiful, and she always has interesting programs, and she's always a lot of fun to watch. Um, and then there's Lacoste, Emily, Emily, I don't know how to say her first name. <laughs> I'm not really showing my figure skating prowess, but if I don't really like a skater, sometimes I don't pay attention. But I do have, have seen her skate before, so I do know that she has the potential to do well. So we'll see. It's going to be an interesting ladies event just because I think a lot of these ladies on any given day could medal so or possibly win. So I'm excited to see who ends up where on the podium. I have to say I'm really excited about the pairs event here at Skate Canada because I like so many of the teams. Um, I think the majority of them I really enjoy. Um, I think the favorites are Tatiana and Maxime, um, and for good reason. They are very dynamic on the ice. They have a great quality about them. I'm not crazy about their programs. I think they're a little bit empty. But I am excited to see how they do having a full season together and, and seeing how they progress and can compete with Aliona and Robin, who I think are the best team currently skating in the world, so we'll see how they do. Um, and then there's the other Russian team, Lubov and Nodari. I can't say their last name, so I'm not even going to try, but I really enjoyed them last year. They were really charming. She's adorable. She's so cute, and I'm really excited to see how they've progressed. Um, I enjoy them tremendously, and, and Russian... The Russian skating scene is so deep now, so it, it's hard to say who will make the teams and, and this, when we get into you know nationals and worlds, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do, and hopefully they can make it to worlds this year. That would be really awesome. Um, and then the Canadian teams, uh, I love Megan and Eric. Love them because she's just awesome and he's a rock star. I remember last year when he like broke his nose in the middle of skating and they ended and the blood was everywhere and I was just like, holy shit, it was crazy. But I was really impressed and um, I really like their programs. I saw them at one of the Canadian competitions over the summer and was really impressed. So I'm hoping that it's progressed since then because their jumping was a little off that day. And by little, I mean a lot. So hopefully, you know, now that the season has started, they're 
more consistent and, and ready to go. And I love Paige and Rudy. I love them. They think about their programs. They have exciting transitions and choreography and lifts. And, and, and there's never a boring part in any of their programs. They just sell everything. I'm just so impressed by them. And I'm really hoping that this can be a breakthrough season for them. And then we have two teams who I think could really play spoiler here. We have Wen Jing and Kong, who are the up-and-coming Chinese team, but they have amazing tricks. They have a quad twist, and they try quad throws, and they just have incredible, incredible tricks. I'm not sold on their delivery and their presentation. They have a lot to work on in that regard, but I mean, in terms of our athletic ability, hands down, amazing. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they throw out and what they're able to land. Um, and then there's the Japanese team of Narumi Takahashi and Mervyn Tran, who I love. They have such great programs. Again, really intricate choreography. You know, they're a team that you can tell really thinks about their programs and, and what they want to do with them. And they try new and innovative things. And they're still an up and coming team, but they're a team I think have so much potential, and I'm really hoping they're able to start fulfilling it this season because I really want them to start having great results because I definitely think that they're deserving. And then for the dance event, which in Canada should be really exciting because the Olympic champions, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, are competing again for a full season this time around, so I'm expecting them to win very handedly. Um, they aren't my favorite team, but like Patrick Chan, I can appreciate them. Um, I really enjoy the rivalry with Meryl and Charlie um, because I think it really pushes them both to do well and continue to improve. Um, so I feel really lucky that we're able to watch them able um, push each other, to be able to push each other rather. So yeah, we'll see. I, I prefer, as far as Canadian dance teams go, I prefer Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Boe, OJ. Me and these names, I swear I love skating, but for some reason I can't, the names are just not working with me tonight. Um, I really love them. They have such a fun, sort of light, airy quality about them. Um, I don't know, I just really love watching them. They look like they have the best time out there, and I'm really hoping that they can continue to improve this season, and, um, just continue to get to get great results. I really, really enjoy them. Um, I also really like the Italian team, Anna Capellini and Luca Renate. Um, I really enjoy them. Um, last season was rough because we weren't able to compete um, very much, so I'm excited to see that they're back. I love Anna. I just love watching her. She has such a wonderful quality about her, and Luca is just, oh my god, so cute. But I think the team I'm most looking forward to seeing is Ekaterina Riazanova and Ilya Tychenko. Again, you Russians, you're killing me. I, I can't say these names. But I love them. I watched their free dance um, at the Russian test skate, and it's to Snowstorm, and it's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, the way they move across the ice, the lifts, the transitions, they're just gorgeous to watch. Um, I much prefer them to their much more hyped um, Russian teammates in Elena Elink and Nikita Katsalakov. Again, the names, I'm just not, I'm just not apologizing. I just can't say them. But um, anyway, I much prefer them. So I'm really hoping that this can kind of be their breakout year. They did well last year, but I think they have so much potential. And I'm really hoping that this season will kind of be the season that makes them contenders. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do and rooting for them to make the podium. I just wanted to conclude my video now by uh, giving you my podium picks for CA Canada. Um, I think in the men's event, first place will be Patrick Chan, second Daisuke Takahashi, and third place Adam Rippin. And then for the ladies event, I think first place will be Liza, second will be Akiko, and third will be Mirai. In the pairs, I think first place will be Tatiana and Maxim, second will be Wen Jing and Kong, and third place will be Lubov and Nodari. 
And then for Ice Dance, I think first place will be Tess on Scott, second place will be Caitlin and Andrew, and third place will be Ekaterina and Ilya. Now, this might be a little bit wishful thinking, but you guys can let me know if you agree, what you think will happen, what you're excited to see, who you're not excited to see. There are a few people that I was not excited to see, but I was nice to them because this is my first video. Give me a few and then my true feelings might start coming out. Just kidding. Maybe. You'll just have to keep watching to find out. Um, so thanks for watching and I will see you on the blog. Bye.